talking, hey, what's all that about? Putting a number of sounds together in recognizable sequences to convey information or emotion or an idea. The ability of a good promo might actually be more important to the art of wrestling than wrestling itself. A good promo sells tickets, a good promo makes a star, a good promo puts your butt in the seat, and ultimately, if two wrestlers wrestle in the woods and there's no one around to see it, then honestly, how much longer can Impact stay in business? That was mean. History is full of amazing promos cut by amazing talents, some that have even revolutionized how wrestling can be presented in the modern age. Hi Colt Cabana, how are you in fact doing? And then there's bad promos, poorly delivered, boring, a waste of everyone's time, and then there's the item of the secret menu, the wrestling promo that's so bad, so gloriously awful, that it goes full circle and becomes iconic in its own way. I'm Adam, hailing from Parts of Unknown, and here are our 10 funniest, so bad they're good, promos. If you'd like to see nothing but good promos, then subscribe to Parts of Unknown. We're always cutting promos on each other and doing very silly wrestling things, most of which are bad, but most of them are so bad they are good. Honorable mention, Shockmaster's debut. Because honestly, it's one of the most overmentioned promos in wrestling history, but how can a man Kool-Aiding himself into existence before landing on his vajazzled Stormtrooper face and lip-syncing a promo whilst desperately trying to wipe the egg from that face while some of the best wrestlers in NWA history and Sid stand around and try not to piss themselves? How can that not at least poke his head around the corner and say, hello, and then fall over? Number 10, Gangrel destroys his whole character. All vampires end up directing porn. It's like all dogs go to heaven but with porn. Before he went into the only business with more grunts and fluids and professional wrestling, Gangrel was one of the most instantly awesome gimmicks in the Attitude Era. His flaming entrance, his awesome music that combined Muzak and heavy breathing better than any of the stuff he would direct later in his career, his bloodbath shenanigans, his harem of lovely blonde Canadian boys. It's just such a shame they once put a microphone in his hand. On an episode of Shotgun Saturday Night in October 98, Gangrel came to the ring to call out Edge, and oh, it's bad, lads. The juxtaposition of the cool, supernatural badass with how he cut his promo, like a loud, inarticulate high school jock talking whilst desperately trying to do algebra in his head, and the only ways he knows to do that is gargle marbles. It's so sadly funny. And to be clear, that's WWE's fault. If a character is cool without saying a word, then don't have him say words, especially when the words are this hilariously awful. Number nine, Luther Reigns has had peas before. This one's just weird. You can cut promos on pretty much anything. You can cut a promo on a person, on an event, on an entire company. Luther Reigns once cut a promo on Thanksgiving itself. That's not really a weird idea. Baby faces celebrate a holiday, out comes a heel to tell everyone why the holiday sucks. Reliable heat. And on an episode of SmackDown November 2004, Luther Reigns interrupted a very big show Thanksgiving. Joy Giovanni made a giant buffet in the middle of the ring, no less. Thank you, Joy. All seem for the big show, who cuts an incredibly long promo and invites Taz to come grab some pie. Luther Reigns, Roman Reigns' older brother, and that's absolutely true, trust me, came down and cut an impassioned promo about how when he grew up, they didn't have Thanksgiving. So far, so fine. But then Luther gets into the ring and continues his promo, angrily telling Joy to fix him a Thanksgiving plate, and it's so funny. Like, he's still raging, but now he's also demanding mashed potatoes, with the highlight of the promo being Reigns screaming into the mic, Give me some of them peas. I've had peas before. Amazing. And I've looked it up, and it's true. Luther Reigns has an actual fact. Had peas before. Number eight, a steamboat and a dog. Don The Rock Morocco may not be a name that's instantly memorable to modern WWE fans, mostly because another The Rock came along and was ever so slightly more famous, but he's had some accomplishments. Unofficial King of the Ring, he held the Intercontinental title for over a year in the early 80s, and he also cut one of the most hilariously awful promos committed to film. In 1986, the hyper-tag match between Ricky Steamboat and the Junkyard Dog versus Morocco and Mr. Fuji, Morocco told an incomprehensible story of how a steamboat not Ricky Steamboat, but an actual steamboat made friends with a dog, including a snarling impression of said dog. To try and save the segment, Mean Gene points out a number on Morocco's jersey, to which he responds, it's all the numbers. It's all time and numbers and space. Uh-oh, thinks Mean Gene. Don has no idea what he's saying. Poor Morocco continues, maybe 64, maybe 65, maybe 46 in somebody else's eyes. Don, what are you talking about? 
Number seven, Lucha Things. Oh, the joy, the sheer joy of Lucha Things. An iconically bad promo. And honestly, one of Kalisto's biggest legacies from his time in WWE and Kalisto, we're really sorry about that. But also, no one is sorry because it's absolutely wonderful. In 2016, to coincide with SmackDown going live on Tuesdays, WWE reinstated the draft, once again dividing its roster into people who suddenly really liked wearing red t-shirts and people who would murder you in your bed if you ever suggested they wear something other than a blue t-shirt. As part of the draft, several wrestlers got an interview about how they felt being on their brand and wearing their new t-shirt, including Kalisto, who cut promo like he was being held at gunpoint, muttering something about doing good lucha things, which I think is the technical term, before having an almost complete nervous breakdown, and then just running away, shouting wahoo as he did so, which I believe is Spanish for, oh, I've just fucked up in the funniest way humanly possible. Number six, McMahon's million dollar mania. No one human being could ever destroy the sexual tyrant that is Vincent Kennedy McMahon. He's the genetic jackhammer, his grapefruits were forged in the fires of Mount Doom, and he has no allergies. However, he's also a grandpa who doesn't know how to operate a phone and loathe the duality of man. In one of WWE's infamous blunders, a scheme so dog ass that even WWE have no choice but to make fun of it themselves, Vince launched McMahon's Million Dollar Mania in 2008. Basically, to boost ratings, Vince would randomly call people live on air, and if they could prove they were watching Raw, they'd win some money. It was a beautiful disaster. People weren't home, kept putting Vince on hold, with the whole music being amazingly Never Gonna Give You Up by Rick Astley, Vince Rickrolled himself live on TV, or while getting increasingly flustered and cutting awkward promos about these kids and their darn fancy landline technology. Wonderful. Number five, your t-shirts are too tight too, Billy. Cut from Vince's old man yelling at clouds to Lex's old man yelling at shirts. It's one of the most famous wrestling shit promos, a memeable favorite of wrestling botch hunters like OSW or Botchamania. In 2004, which is over a decade after Lex Luger's heyday in WWE, he was cutting a promo for Cyberspace Wrestling Federation founded by Billy Firehawk. And I'm not entirely sure that Lex was happy with how the promotion was treating him. Difficult to tell, except no it isn't at all, as Lex cuts arguably the most impassioned promo of his entire career, railing against whether or not the promotion could even afford to pay him, screaming the iconic, I don't know, straight down the lens before trying and failing to rip his t-shirt over his head, screaming almost purple with rage, and your t-shirts are too tight too, Billy. Come for Billy Firehawk's financials if you must, Lex, but you f***ing leave the t-shirts out of it. Number four, yep. Talking about this is pretty me, but also gosh darn hilarious because it's the answer to the age old question, what if a newborn deer cut a wrestling promo? Jump in Jeff, as white meat a baby face as you could get, was cutting a promo in IPW against Motley Cruz, a man who evidently had turned some sort of tables on him. In an interview segment that carries the heartbreaking subtitle recorded earlier, which suggests they had the opportunity to not air it or crazier still get a better take, and they chose not to. Honestly, it's hard to tell through the grain, but Jeff Farmer looks on the verge of tears tears at all times, and not tears of rage, tears because he's only just been born and wants a nappy nap instead of cutting a promo. He starts the promo by saying, yep, then a pause you could drive a bus through for mumbling sadly about how he doesn't like when things aren't my going my way, before finding a semblance of babyface fire, having no idea what to say next, instead screaming, this time I'm going full force. Poor lad. Number three, Sid's brain. I mean, all Sid promos would have been a fine title for this entry. The man talks like refrigerator poetry, but the only magnets available are ones that read incomprehensible yelling and the refrigerator's full of murderers. His infamous we're live pal blunder is a pure joy, as well as the backstage segment where he finds his flattened car and yells Goldberg with all the intensity of King Lear being disemboweled by an even crazier King Lear, but got to go with the one that's so funny, it pops the boys. When in WCW, he confronts the outsiders in the ring, Kevin Nash is wearing a mask to look like Sid. God, he looks like Oz's son. And Sid drops the bomb on them that they are half the man that he is. And of course, that Sid has half the brain that they do. Cue the late great Scott Hall repeating what Sid said in Kevin Nash's ear and both men flat out pissing themselves, laughing the most joyful of wrestling bollocks. Number two, the genesis of McGillicuddy. Oh, Curtis Axel, you were too good for this world. A one man wheelbarrow of endearing wrestling crap. Let us count the ways that you entertained us with Axel Mania, lovely, with the chains are off. Amazing, shouting, this is supposed to be serious, I'm a serious wrestler in a Saturday morning slam match with Sheamus that ended with Curtis Axel accidentally rolling up and trying to pin the referee, whatever the whole yee 
ye thing was, but his masterpiece of terrible wrestling glory was, of course, the genesis of McGillicuddy, a supposed to be serious promo he cut on the old game show era of NXT, where he tried to big up his future in the company by saying, and here it is word for word, and starting this moment, from now, from this moment on, this will be the moment, starting now, of the genesis of McGillicuddy. Brevity is not the soul of wit. Mr. Perfect's son is the soul of wit. And number one, all Scott Steiner promos. I mean, how do you choose? History's most sexually charged lunatic. Cutting promos where he screams gymnasium jazz into the world, and if you can't decode his special messages, then that's just your genetically inferior fat asses fault. He's a promo cutting force that can't be controlled, will not be controlled, especially by the pencil neck geeks over at TNA, who had no choice but to sit back and watch him scream extraordinary nonsense over their airwaves. The promo he cuts on Team 3D and their fat asses is Hall of Fame worthy, but of course, how could it be anything other than Steiner Maths for the top spot? A madman's manifesto and a one-man crusade against meaning itself. You know they say all men are created equal, but you look at me and you look at Samoa Joe and you can see that statement is not true. See, normally if you go one-on-one -on -one with another wrestler, you've got a 50-50 chance of winning, but I'm a genetic freak and I'm not normal, so you've got a 25% chance at best at beat me. Then you add Kurt Angle to the mix, your chances of winning drastically it go down. See, the three-way at sacrifice, you got 33 and a third chance of winning. But I, I got a 66 and two-thirds chance of winning because Kurt Angle knows he can't beat me and he's not even going to try. So Samoa Joe, you take your 33 and a third chance minus my 25% chance and you got an eighth and a third chance of winning at sacrifice. But then you take my 75% chance of winning if we was to go one-on-one -on -one, and then add 66 two-thirds percents and I got 104 two-thirds chance of winning at sacrifice. See, Joe, the numbers don't lie, and they spell disaster for you at sacrifice. Sheer wrestling perfection. Thank the Lord for Big Papa Pump. And that's our list. What's your favorite terrible promo? Let us know in the comments. Don't forget to like and share this video around if you enjoyed it. Make sure you subscribe to Parts of Unknown for more silly wrestling content. And never forget to jam that jam.